conservative new media viewers and NBA fans around the world. What's going on? It's me, PFE, Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. We're here to talk about a quote that LeBron James just gave today, Monday, September 30th, 2013, on the occasion of the Miami Heat's media day. This is when the media comes in, they get pictures, they get interviews, the team will take photos for the for the team, they'll do videos, they'll do all kinds of stuff. It's kind of like the kickoff of the team's training camp. So LeBron James, according to Ethan Skolnick, who is now of the Bleacher Report, uh, this comes via his Twitter account, and we will put the information in the video description below the video player so you can go and check it out for yourself. So LeBron said that he wants to be the greatest player of all time. And look, we told you guys after the 2013 finals, we made a video, and I will put information for the video in the video description so you can go check it out. We said in that video, I said that LeBron James had surpassed Kobe Bryant as an individual player because based upon their accomplishments, not Kobe winning five rings, but Kobe winning two rings with him as the lead dog, with him as Superman or Batman instead of being Robin to Shaq's Batman. So this isn't surprising that LeBron's starting to think this way. And there are a lot of other people who are starting to think about LeBron in the conversation as the greatest player of all time. One of those people is the general manager of the Houston Rockets, Daryl Morey. Uh, Daryl Morey said the other day at the Houston Rockets 2013 media day, that LeBron James was potentially the greatest player ever. And I will give you the information about what more I said also in the video description. I went and made a thread about it on the uh, Real GM Basketball Forum site, and it has generated a lot of discussion, as you might imagine. But More isn't the only other basketball player person of prestige to talk about LeBron this way. Chris Mannix of Sports Illustrated, who is an NBA writer, said during the playoffs, and I remember hearing him on the radio saying this, that he believed that LeBron James had already surpassed Michael Jordan as a player because LeBron could do, I believe he said, more things than Jordan was capable of doing. John Barry of ESPN also said that he thought LeBron James was a better player than Michael Jordan for similar reasons. Said he could do more things, maybe he could guard more positions, whatever it was. Those two reporters, and of course John Barry is a former NBA player himself, and he's the son of NBA Hall of Famer Rick Barry, they've already said they already think LeBron's better than Michael Jordan. But people like Daryl Morey are saying he could be. He could be the greatest ever. Larry Bird last year, before Miami had won any of their rings, before the first ring they won with the big three, said that LeBron James was close to Michael Jordan. So LeBron, you know, LeBron's a very self-motivated person. He wants to be the greatest. It's I'm sure he's felt that way his whole career and before his career started. But now he's actually saying it. And he also said later in the same uh, media day, he knows he's not there yet. He knows he's a long way away from being the greatest. But now he says he can see the light, meaning he can see the light at the end of the tunnel. He's, he's in the discussion. He's in the arena, which is the way that I put it over at Real GM as Hot Rocks 34. That's my account over there on a real GM. Uh, look, he does have a long way to go. Now, do I think that LeBron James needs to win six rings or seven rings to be the greatest ever? No, because Michael Jordan won six rings, but that's less than Bill Russell's 11 rings. You don't have to win 
X number of rings to be the greatest. It helps. I mean, if he can win six rings or seven rings, that's going to help him a whole bunch. But I don't think it's necessarily the case that he has to win that. I will say this, though. Winning a ring this year would help tremendously. And accomplishing a few more feats this year would help tremendously for his argument. And I say that because, number one, if LeBron wins a ring this year, then it's a three-peat and become one of only like six or seven teams in NBA history, I believe it is, to win a three-peat. Number two, if LeBron is able to win the MVP trophy this year during the regular season, and he's also able to win the finals MVP trophy, as he has done the past two years, he would become the only player in NBA history to win MVP and Finals MVP three years in a row. Right now, he is tied with Michael Jordan as the only two players in NBA history to win those two awards in back-to-back years. So if he does it three years in a row, that's a whole different level. That's a completely new level. Now, Jordan, I think, could have done that, but he retired after after the first three championships. He retired, and then he missed the next year, year and a half. So he wasn't able to do that. So that would be significant for LeBron. Here's something else, a couple other metrics about best player ever. Right now, LeBron James and Michael Jordan are tied with four seasons, four regular seasons of with a player efficiency rating, which is an advanced metric, which is relatively common these days. It's also known as PER. Jordan and LeBron have four seasons with a PER over 30.0. For those of you that aren't familiar with PER, a good PER number pretty darn good, is 20.0. So both LeBron and Jordan had four years of over 30.0. The higher the number, the better the number. That is the most in NBA history. Wilt Chamberlain and Shaquille O'Neal each had three years with a PER of 30 or more. So if LeBron is able to get another year of of a PER of 30.0, he becomes the most in history of the NBA. That's another accomplishment he could put up there to say, yeah, I'm the greatest. If he wins the MVP, that's his, it would be his fifth MVP trophy, which would tie Michael Jordan and would uh, be the second most or tied for the second most in NBA history behind Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who has six MVP trophies. Now, Jordan, in looking at the numbers, Jordan had three playoff runs where he had a player efficiency rating of 30.0 or greater. LeBron, that's tied for the most in NBA history with Shaquille O'Neal. LeBron has two playoff runs of a 30.0 PER or greater. So if LeBron has a monster year this year, He wins a ring. He wins finals MVP. He wins regular season MVP. He goes for a 30.0 PER in the regular season. He goes for a 30.0 PER in the playoffs. I think at that point in time, you're absolutely looking at somebody who is probably a top five player of all time. Now, he doesn't have to do it this year. I mean, maybe they have a bad year this year, and then LeBron wins two rings in a row after that. It's not necessary for him to win this year to be in the all-time greatest discussion, in my opinion, but it certainly would help a great deal. And if he does do it, and he does get some of these other accomplishments, like finals MVP, like MVP, then I think there's almost no way you can't put him at least in the top six players of all time. Uh, I'll give credit to Magic. I'll keep him in the top five, but if, if, or at least in the discussion of that. But if LeBron does those things, runs the big time numbers, wins the ring, wins the MVP, wins finals MVP, I think it will be almost impossible to not have him 
at le- I mean, even at the outline, just just to make it even a little more inclusive, at least as a top seven player of all time. So he's he's in sight now. He's in range, which is exactly what LeBron said. He's in the discussion now. And I think only dedicated LeBron haters don't think he's in that discussion now. He's in the discussion. But this year is important. It's not critical, but if he accomplishes it this year, it's almost no way you can keep him out of that discussion. Seriously keep him in the discussion for one of the top seven players of all time. So that's where we're at. There's a whole bunch of pressure on the Miami Heat. And I will say this about the Miami Heat, and I've said this in about them in a couple videos that we've done about them this summer, I think, or at least stuff that I've written on various sites. They're old. They have an old team. In fact, they might be the oldest team by average age of player in the entire NBA. That That's not good. It's good to be experienced, but you don't want to be old. It's going to be difficult for them to win this year. I know Steve Kerr of TNT Sports and others have said similar things. They don't think they're going to win. Kerr doesn't even think they're going to make the finals. And there are reasons for that. It's not easy, and it's not going to be easy. So the target is on them. Everybody's looking to take them down. The East has gotten stronger. The West has gotten stronger. It's going to be tough. One other thing that will help LeBron if if Miami is able to at least make the finals, that they would become the first team in like 25 years to make four straight NBA finals. I think the last team that did it was the Lakers. Uh in like the late 80s, although I could be wrong about that. It's either the Lakers or the Celtics, I think, in the 1980s, but it's been a long time. So that would be another feather in LeBron's cap and another argument for him in that greatest discussion if he is able to do that. That's the latest. Again, the defending champion Miami Heat who are looking for a three-peat championship this season. Today is their media day. And the greatest player currently in the NBA has come out and says that he wants to be the greatest player of all time. Tell me what you think about that. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Your comments below. Once again, I am PFV Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. We will talk to you guys soon. I can't wait for the upcoming NBA season, and I'm sure you can't wait either. And LeBron has just spiced things up even more. Let's get to it.